G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to start talking about the string instructions. So there's five string instructions all up, but we've also got to get through the um, repeat prefixes. So I thought in this tutorial we'd look at um, store string and the repeat prefixes, and we'll leave the other string instructions for later tutorials. Okay, so first of all, what is a string? In um, C++, a string is something quite different to what it is in assembly. So in assembly, all they mean when they say string instructions is uh, these are instructions that operate on contiguous memory. So this is um, memory that's all beside each other. So let's just draw a little diagram. So if this is memory just here, so this is low memory and this is high memory, and these are all bytes, then we could say that this byte, this byte, and this byte are all contiguous since they're all beside each other and there's no bytes in between and we could say that this byte and this byte are contiguous with each other but we couldn't say that these two are contiguous with these three because there's a space in the middle so the string instructions operate on contiguous memory that is that they operate on um, bytes, words, double words, quad words but one after another in memory alrighty just get my eraser Okay, so that's that's what they operate on. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, null terminated, as in C, where there's a, a zero character at the end to indicate the end of the string, and uh, there's certainly not the uh, string class from C. Strings are just contiguous memory. Okay, so the first instruction that we're going to look at is um, store string. And the mnemonic for store string is S T O S, and then mem. And mem here can be um, 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits. But um, I'm just about to describe why I never use this version with a, a parameter. And there's actually four other versions which um, take no parameters at all. And I'll just write those out. So S T O S B, store string in bytes. STOSW, store string in words, STOSD, STOSQ. Okay, so the reason why um, I prefer these ones down here, B, W, D, and Q, appended to the end of STOS, is because they're the same as this one, only I think it's more obvious. So with the um, store string, uh, it seems as though it's going to store the string to um, wherever you've got the memory operand, but it doesn't actually use the memory operand for that. The only thing that it uses the memory operand for is to decide the size, B, W, D, or Q. So if you say something like um, stos, maybe D word, P, T, R, R, C, X, okay, so you've set R, C, X to point to your string, you read that line and you'd think that it's going to store things in D words into that pointer, but it's not. Store string always stores um, to whatever RDI is pointing to. Okay, so I don't use this version up here. You can use it if you like, but just be careful because this isn't the string that it's storing to. It always stores to RDI. I prefer to use these other versions. Anyway, that's enough about what I prefer to do. Okay, so the string instructions work with um, all implicit operands. Let me just move this up. And they work with two registers, um, RDI and RSI. Uh, store string only works with RDI, which is the destination index and RSI is the source index and I mean to say that the, the RDI, the destination index, is an implicit operand to the STOS B or STOS W instruction sounds really complicated but uh, it's actually really simple all that happens is um, you set RDI to point to your string, this is for um, store string with something like say we've been passed a, um, a character array in uh, RCX. So we set RDI to point to that just by copying it over there and 
then the next thing that uh, store string does is uh, it needs al something in al. So mob al and say a. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to um, well if we just write the command first stos b. What stos b does store string b is um, pretty much exactly this uh, mob byte ptr rdi and al and then add al oops add rdi one okay all that this command here does all that this instruction does is moves the byte or moves a or sorry al into whatever rdi is pointing to and then it increments rdi so let's have a bit of a look over here if this is our array just here and initially RDI is pointing there, that's the start of our array. And we call STOS B uh, with an A just there in AL. The first thing it's going to do is move an A right there. And the next thing it's going to do is increment um, RDI. So it's sort of similar to the uh, push and pop where there's an implicit reference to the RSI, the uh, stack pointer, but with these string ones the implicit operands are the destination index and the source index. So all that it's going to do if we call stos b again, uh, it's going to copy an a right here and once again it's going to move rdi to there. And it's simple as that folks, that's all stos b does. Um, if I just move this back to here and we get rid of these two a's Let's say instead of stos b, um, instead of storing bytes, let's say that we want to work with w words. Oops. Well, this is really easy too. So you still set up your um, pointer exactly the same as you did before. You copy the array into RDI since um, the store string instruction always references RDI. Uh, but this time it's ax. So we'll just say 125. Okay. So what's this going to do? Um, these two lines just here before were what happens when uh, we call store byte, but there's a couple of changes when you call um, store word. Number one, the size of the pointer changes to a word pointer. This is all automatic too. All you type is stos w. Very cool. Uh, number two, instead of copying al into that position, it copies ax the word. And number three, the third thing that's different is that uh, rdi is incremented by two. So in this way we can work with contiguous words using stos w. Let's have a look. So if we call stos w the first time, what's going to happen is 1, 2, 5 will be written as a uh, word across those first two bytes. Then the next thing that's going to happen is RDI will be incremented too. If we called stos w again, uh, of course we get 1, 2, 5 in those two. And once again RDI, oops, would be incremented to. Okay, so the only difference there is that everything is changed to words. It's um, a word pointer, it's AX instead of AL, and it's 2 that's uh, added to RDI. Oops. Hello. Oh, look, get out of here. Okay, so if we move on to um, stos d, and we talk about what stos d does, we might have to make this a bit bigger, but it's pretty easy really, I think. You can probably guess what it's going to do. Okay, so we'll say that rdi is pointing here at the start. So stos, stos d doesn't reference ax. No, nope, it references EAX. And once again, all it's going to do is uh, change all of these to their um, D word versions. So this will be D word pointer, and this will be EAX instead of AX, the D word version of, uh, EA of uh, RAX. And instead of incrementing RDI by 2, because we're working in double words, it's going to increment it by 4. Okay, so what's going to happen? The first stos d that we call, it's going to go 1, 2, 
five. I've drawn massive one, two, five to uh, take up all four bytes there, so that that's a double word. And then it's going to add four to RDI. And also, if we called it again, DOS D, I would do exactly the same thing. One, two, five, and increment this. Okay, so logically, if you were to um, instead of using uh, STOS D, if we use STOS Q, it's just as easy. I think you can guess what's going to happen. Um, first of all, the uh, value that it's going to be moving into the pointer is RAX, the Q word version of uh, RAX. It's a Q word. This is RAX. And of course, it's not going to increment by 4, it's going to increment by 8. Alrighty, so in this way, if we called um, STOS Q, it would um, yeah, chuck RAX into the pointer, then increment by 8 RDI. So that's how you work with contiguous uh, quad words in memory. And these are called the string instructions because they sort of make these things really easy. Let's just have a bit of an example as a segue into the wonderful repeat prefixes. Okay, rub all this out, rub, 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 rub. Okay, if we go through another example, say we want to set um, five bytes to the value E, and let's say that the um, bytes are in RCX. So we've we've just hit our proc, and it's maybe called like set to E. It's a proc, and it's just taken maybe one parameter in RCX. So the first thing that we want to do is mov. Um, RDI, the destination index, RCX. So we copy the array that we were passed. We just pretend that we were passed an array in RCX. I know there's nothing indicating that we were. But, um, we copy that array into RDI, and the next thing we do is mov AL, the value E, because that's what we want to fill the array with. And now we could do stos B, stos B. We said the array was five long, so stos B, stos B, stos B. Ret and P. Oh, sorry, set to E and P. That should be. Okay, and what's this going to do? Well, here's our array just here. We've got uh, so one, two, three, four. Yep, that's five. Uh, as we just went through before, RDI is going to be pointing there. It's going to copy an E right there. This is the um, that was that line. The second line is going to result in exactly the same thing, only there. Up. And the next will be there. That's this line. Etc, etc. So the other two lines will just do exactly the same thing. And eventually RDI will be pointing just outside the end of the array. That will be done. So after five runs through, um, yeah, we've achieved what we wanted. We've set five E's in memory. But, how would we go if we had to set, say, 9,000 E's? Uh, it's impractical to say stos b 9,000 times. So obviously you could do um, something like maybe my loop like this. We could say like mov rcx 9,000 and stos b deke oops, rcx and jump not zero to my loop. And that would do it. We could set up a loop. But as it turns out, this is so common to um, use these string instructions like this that there's an easier way to do it. And this is um, this is called the repeat prefix. And a prefix is something that comes to the left of the instruction. Oh, I shouldn't rub that out, should I? Set. Okay, so the repeat prefix for... there's actually three of them, but... Um, we'll just be looking at one today, which is REP. And what REP means is um, pretty much do the instruction RCX times. So we've got rep stos b. It means repeat this, repeat store uh, string byte, however many times is in RCX. So instead of doing um, five stos b's like we did just here, uh, all we would actually need to do is rub 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 rub. All we would actually need to do is something like mov rcx5 and rep 
stos b and that's going to repeat stos b five times is that pretty cool so if our array happened to be you know nine million we could just say mov rcx nine million rep stos b and off it would go fill an array of nine million bytes with the value e now the repeat prefix if we write down exactly what it does instead of um, just generally indicating uh, this is this is how I would translate this exact line just here um, it's uh, while RCX does not equal zero it's supposed to be an open curly brace just there decrement RCX and mov oops and this is uh, Okay, so these two lines just here are the um, stos b, that's what we were just looking at a minute ago. But the loop outside here, while rcx is not zero, decrement rcx, is um, the rep part of it. This is what the re repeat prefix does. So if we just have another little run through quickly. Here's our array, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Rdi. And I might just make a note, actually I'll get rid of this over here. We don't need that anymore, we know the procedure ends. Okay, RCX equals 5. Now, when it hits this rep stos b, it's going to be sort of right here. It's going to say while RCX does not equal 0. So the first thing that it's going to do is have a look at RCX and say, are you 0, Russ? RCX is going to say, no mate, I'm 5. And the next thing that happens is it decrements RCX to 4. Then we get our STOS B, just as before. So in this particular instance, we move E into there, and the uh, RDI is going to be incremented to here. And then we go back to the top of the loop. Are you 0, Mr. RCX? Well, RCX is going to say, gosh, no, I'm 4. It's going to be decremented because of this line. And we're going to store another E. Straight after we store that E, the RDI will be incremented. And once again we ask, are you 0 RCX? RCX is going to say, nah mate, I'm 3. It's going to be decremented to 2. We'll store another E because of this line. And of course RDI will be incremented to here. Once again we go through, we'll say, are you 0? He'd go, no. We'll decrement him to 1. We'll store another E. RDI's arrow seems to be getting chopped up. <laughs> And we'll inc uh, sorry, increment the RDI. Alrighty, then we go back to the top. We'll say, are you uh, zero, Mr. RCX? He'll say, no, nah, I'm not zero. He'll decrement himself to zero. Um, we'll store that E, and RDI will be incremented. Right here. Okay, he'll be there. I say, he'll be there. Alright. And, uh, yeah, then we go back to the top of the loop. We say, are you uh, zero, Mr. RCX? And he goes, yes. Yes, I'm zero. Get out of here. And uh, once that's done, once RCX says he's zero, the rep stos b is finished, and it drops down to the next line. So I think down at the next line we had ret, and then the end of our procedure. Alrighty, so that's what the repeat prefix does. And I want to say that you shouldn't put the repeat prefix, or well, any of the repeat prefixes, um, to the left of any instruction that's not a string instruction. This is specifically what the repeat prefix is designed for. And also, I like to put the repeat prefix um, one tab less than the instruction. So on the same tab as my function, but um, my function header, that's just a, a stylish thing. A, a sort of do whatever you want, whatever you find easier to read. And uh, yeah, so using the repeat prefix, you, you don't have to use stos b. You can use stos w, stos q, you know, and you can jump through an array, repeatedly set 9 million um, quad words to 108 if you want. All good. Well, I hope that makes sense, and that's an uh, introduction to string instructions and the repeat prefix. And next time we'll get on to some of the other string instructions. Thank you for listening.